Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all so much for joining us here today. As some of you may know and some may not know, earlier this year, the LPGA launched a new brand positioning that we like to call Drive On. It is a message rooted in golf, but extends beyond our sport and is focused on the motivating power of big dreams, finding the vision to see beyond what has already been done, and believing that something greater is possible. And today, we're very excited to introduce the latest Drive On Spot. Joining me up here on stage are two very special guests. The first is the woman who's helped lead the LPGA through this brand launching, LPGA Chief Brand and Communications Officer, Roberta Bowman. And with Roberta on stage is LPGA Tour member, Mariah Stackhouse, who's in her third year on the LPGA Tour following a very successful amateur career, four-time All-American at Stanford, and helped lead the Cardinal to a national championship in 2015. Roberta, can you give us just a little background on Drive On and the 45 second spot? This is for every girl that really helped launch this. Sure, thank you, Kelly, and, and hello to everyone. Uh, Drive On was launched back in March as our repositioning for the LPGA Tour. We believe that Drive On is true to our history, but a way for us to have conversation and connection with people beyond golf. We are so proud and excited about our LPGA professionals, but before you can cheer for Mariah, you've got to be interested. And we can say that for all of our players as well. So this Drive On campaign is about celebrating the diligence, the determination, the tenacity, and the sheer grit that it takes to excel, not just in golf, but in life as well. And as such, it's not just for women, it's not just for girls, it's a message that we think resonates for all ages and both genders as well. So just to calibrate our conversation today, if I can take us back to March and the launch of Drive On, we'll share with you the quick film that we did back then, This Is For Every Girl. If we can roll the film. This is for every girl who's ever been laughed at or told she doesn't belong. This is for every girl who's been told she's too loud, too quiet, too this or too that. This is for every girl who thinks her body isn't good enough. This is for every girl who feels she doesn't fit in. This is for every girl who's been told that success and kindness are two different things. This is for every girl who's been told to give up. This is us crushing it for you. So you can crush it for the next girl. So credit to our creative partners here at Ogilvy Worldwide. The, the beauty of Drive On is it, it's such a sturdy platform for sharing the stories of our players. And over the course of the months, and I do believe over the course of the years ahead, we'll have the opportunity to showcase these talented professionals, not just our LPGA professionals, but our 1,800 teachers, the young girls that play through girls golf as well. And that's gonna be the real uh, beauty and magic of this campaign. But today is all about unveiling our next feature in the Drive On series. I am delighted to share with you the world premiere of Every Diamond in the Sky. If we could roll that film. This is for every girl who hears people say she won't make it but refuses to listen. For every girl who thinks not about what she has to lose, but about what she has to gain. This is for every girl who doesn't look like everyone who's come before, but may look like those who will follow. This is for every diamond in the sky. This is for every girl. Mariah, that piece still gives me tears, so don't mind my little glassy eyes here. But this spot was very personal to you. You worked very closely with Roberta and, and the LPGA on this spot. What does it mean to you to have your story featured in the Drive On campaign? And what, what was it in the messaging that was really important for you in, in this piece? Absolutely. Um, I 
think that when Roberta introduced the Drive On campaign to us as players and shared what her mission was going to be and um, kind of re-imaging how we talk about our LPGA players and, and just sharing the diverse and uh, the number of journeys that we have to share. Um, I was very excited just at the, at the launch itself. Um, and as someone who has so much respect for my peers and over the last three years, I've gotten to know a lot of players and gotten to know the journeys of my friends and what it took for them to get onto the LPGA tour. And, and sharing those stories with each other. I was so excited and honored when Roberta gave me the opportunity to share my story through the Drive One campaign because it's something that I'm really excited about. I've loved what's been shared so far this year and to be able to participate in that. And I'm excited for what Roberta is gonna continue to share with us and the stories that I'll get to see in the future. So it meant the world to me to be a part of this Drive One campaign and the message that um, is promoted through it. And then looking at that personally, um, with my story, I just kind of wanted to share a bit about my upbringing and, and the role that my parents played in, in pushing determination, confidence, and, and inspiration through me so that I had the tenacity and the drive to go after my dreams. And um, I think that my introduction to golf and the journey that I've taken to get here on tour is a drive one story, and I'm excited to share that with you all. You're only in your third year on the LPGA Tour, but as you talked about, your golf journey began much longer before that. So tell us a little bit about that beginning of, of your journey when you first fell in love with golf. And as we sit here and listen to you, there's many things you could do in, in your life. Why golf as your career? Right. I got started playing golf at the age of two, and it was definitely a story of daddy's girl wanting to go wherever he went when he left the house. And that took us to the golf course most days. And that was my introduction to the game of golf. And from there, um, once we moved to Atlanta, it was me, my dad, and my brother. And we'd go after school, we'd go on the weekends, and I started to develop a, a love and a passion for the game. He, um, signed me up for junior competitions and from there you know I had that that I did with my dad and my brother and then all of a sudden I was making friends um, and that continued to make golf um, more enticing for me as a kid and as I developed and and started to perform well in these events it started to be something that I envisioned for myself um, doing in the future. And you watch LPGA players. I grew up watching superstars like Annika and Lorena and being inspired by them and saying, you know, I think that I'd really like the opportunity to pursue this as a career myself. And that's just kind of my journey. And it took me um, to college where I had the most wonderful experience. And now here where I'm in my third year continuing to work and improve my game. And it just gives me so much um, year in and year out and it's a fantastic sport. You talk about that special relationship with your parents. The image at the beginning of your spot is of you and your dad and, and I know that's been a huge part of your journey. Part of that too is an affirmation actually that you that your dad worked on with you from when you were little. Can you share a little bit about that affirmation and sort of how that's really helped shape uh, who you are today? Yes. So when I was younger, my parents wrote an affirmation for me, and I think I was around the age of two or three when they got the idea. And it's a few paragraphs long, and what it's intended to do is instill me with confidence. And so it, it's in the form of four paragraphs. Um, the first is a Bible passage. The second is a verse that talks about how I will look at myself and think of myself. The third is a, a, a paragraph about how I will interact and treat others in the world. And then as I got a little bit older, there was a fourth paragraph added that dealt directly with golf because that was something that I was doing competitively. Um, and when I look back on it and I read it, you know, it's something that I said to myself in the mirror every day and I still say, but when I, whenever I share and talk about it with others, I realized how awesome it was that, you know, they said, we have this little girl and we want her to believe in herself and to be confident. So what we're gonna do 
is write something that she has to say to herself in the mirror every day um, so that she believes in so that she believes in her and um, it has shaped absolutely who I am in the world today um, the confidence and belief I have in myself and is a constant source of reinforcement when times are hard that's Absolutely amazing. And I know for all of us that have heard little pieces of it, it really resonates. So I want to share a little video that we have actually that KPMG uh, helped put together as part of your story. But it's a, a young Mariah saying just a, a line from the affirmation. I am a very tall person with my own ideas and my own direction. I'm a very proud person with my own ideas and my own direction in life. I'm a proud person with my own ideas and my own direction in life. Life. It's just amazing as, as a parent myself to sit there and see you at such a young age and, and having that confidence, that special relationship with your parents and, and you saw your, your dad there. How much has that really shaped you, you as an individual? Um, I think incredibly. Um, one thing that I'll, I'll say is I remember having a conversation with a friend of mine in college, and she just kind of shared, you know, Mariah, you have this way of interacting with people and carrying yourself that, you know, people are, you know, drawn to you, but it's because you have a confidence that's not aggressive, it's just, it's warm, it's friendly, and it's nurturing. And it was, it's one of those things where when somebody cares about you says something like that to you, um, I was able to directly relate it to that affirmation. And I think that I always had a guide from a kid of how I, I'm like, I'm even sounding emotional now talking about it, but um, it was my guide as a kid for how I grew in the world and interacted with the world around me. And I was able to do that gently, um, but with a self-assurance. And I think that that's been huge for me um, as I've grown. Roberta, you've been a part and have spoken with Mariah many times and have seen people hear that, that mantra and hear that. What is it about her story that, that really we wanted to focus on her for, for the drive on spot? Yeah, and, and you just heard some of it, but anyone who makes it to the most elite level of whatever their pursuit, whether it's athletics or whatever, no, no one does it alone. And I was so impressed when I heard this. And I think this is a celebration of everything that Mariah has accomplished, but it's also a celebration of parenting done well, uh, at least from the outside, I have to say. It's been a remarkable story, and I loved what your college roommate said. I don't know, I never know what it is, but I know it when I see it, and there's a sparkle and an energy and a charisma that I think everyone that interacts with you, we feel it. So this drive-on story, even in 30 seconds, was a chance for us to share who Mariah is with a broader group and bring more people into the game of golf as well. Mariah, you, you talk a lot about all the people that have that supported you and, and helped you in this journey. You're only the seventh African-American to, to play on the LPGA Tour. So one of the really powerful lines, I think, in that spot is where we talk about you cannot be what you do not believe. When you talk about that in, in some of the things that you say, and you, know, you cannot be what you do not see, you're now in this role model role. Why is it uh, so important to you to be that role model to that next group and that belief within yourself of, of being able to see beyond what really is just necessarily in front of you? Mm -hmm. I think that I always welcome the opportunity um, to be a role model to someone who might look up to me, and that's for whatever reason. Because I think a lot of the time we look at role models and we think, okay, that's somebody who does what you do, but that doesn't have to be the case. Um, and it doesn't have to be necessarily, for me, um, a woman. It just has to be someone who, with whatever it is that they do, there's a grace, there's a fire, there's a tenacity, um, there's a passion. And I see that, and I want to replicate that. I want to take some of those qualities and 
work on having them myself and putting that energy to what I do in life. And so to me, I think about all the people who have served as role models to me, whether that's personally in my life or people that I've watched um, from afar, just you know, being themselves in, in whatever their field. And that's been so important to giving me inspiration to continue on my journey. And that's what being a role model means to me. And so if there's um, a young person, a kid, an adult who looks at me and, and, and can say, hey, I like how Mariah did this, and you know, I can learn from that, then that means that not only am I getting to do what I love, but in my love for that, I can be a positive influence for someone else because I know how many people were that for me. Um, and that's what being a role model is all about, is it's inspiring and, and encouraging others um, to believe in themselves the way that you had people do that for you. Well, I could sit up here and ask you questions all day <laughs> long and listen to your story, but I definitely want to open it up for people in the room, for anyone that might have a question for Mariah. We will start here in the front with Steve. Mariah, I've known you since you were 10 years old, <laughs> yes. working out at our golf course. Mm -hmm. And you were always with your dad, but you always seemed to have this great relationship with your dad. Growing up, um, I know you've seen a lot of parents and children who perhaps didn't have that good relationship. I'd like for you for a second to talk to the parents of young aspiring players. Mm -hmm. what, would, what advice would you give them about how to guide a child through that sort of, uh, the, the, right. through the game? Right. Um, you know, I, I'll talk from my perspective and, and the things that I felt that my dad did a great job of with me when we were on the golf course. If, you know, you serve as a coaching or an encouraging role to your child in a sport that they're playing, I think that it's all about trying to find the balance between pushing and just allowing them to grow and be. And what I mean by that is, you've gone through life and you have experiences that you're gonna be able to impart on your children, but you don't wanna do it in a demanding or, um, you know, I guess, yes, just a demanding way. So my dad pushed me, there's no doubt about that. Um, you know, it wasn't always, oh, man, I'm tired, you know, and he says, no, we need to get through these drills, you know, because I want you to be the best that you can be. And I think that that's the tender touch that my dad always had. When it came time to push, he would always tie it back to, because I believe in you, and I want you to um, give yourself the best opportunities in life. And... Um, be able to, if this is something that you want to do, be able to do that. And, and if this is, okay, so for golf, you love golf, you want to play professionally, and if you're serious about that, I'm going to help you get there. But I'll always say one tidbit that my dad did when he was forced me to take two or three weeks off at the end of season. I wasn't able to touch a club. I had to relax. Um, and at the end of that three-week break, he'd come back and he'd say, all right, do you miss golf? Do you want to play? And I said, yes, I'm ready to get back to practice. And he said, OK, this statement is a commitment for this entire year. You're going to work hard. You're going to dedicate yourself to the game. And then at the end of next year, we'll take another break. But right now, um, we're full powering into practice and tournaments. And I think that that was very special, right? Because he would force me to take time off. And I had to say that I wanted to continue playing. And I had to understand that if I said that, then that whole year we were going strong and we were practicing and we were working. Um, so there was always a choice for me um, and an opportunity for me to miss golf. And, and then the understanding that I was making a commitment to myself and that I was gonna have to um, work hard at that. So that was kind of a special thing that he did for me there. We've talked about lots of stories with your, your dad of some of the things. I know even how you mark your golf ball to this day is something that he instilled in you very little. Can you tell the story about how you mark your golf ball and how that came to yes. be? Um, I mark my golf ball with an M and a D, and that story originates from my first ever tournament. I was six years old, and the field was nine and under, if I'm not mistaken. 
So after the first day, um, I was in the lead going into the second round and I was playing with other nine-year-olds and I looked at my dad and I shared with him, I'm scared, you know, because they're bigger than me. <laughs> and he reminded me of the story of David and Goliath and that David was so much smaller than Goliath but he believed in himself and was able to defeat Goliath. And so from that moment, he wrote a D um, next to the M on my golf ball to stand for Mariah and David. And that served to me to always remember the story of David and Goliath and that I can achieve whatever it is that's in front of me, I can overcome it. And so from, this, from that day forward and until this day, I still mark my ball with an M and a D to always keep David right beside me and that memory in mind. Uh, and then go to Karen. Yeah, I, I you know, listen to this story. It's, it's just tremendous. And you're obviously a tremendous role model for, for every player that's coming after you. And you've learned this from your father. Where did he learn it from? Who did he learn it from? And how did he get to a point that he could uh, be so amazing with the advice that he's given to you? Yes. You know, I think that my parents both talked about what they wanted. Um, I think they were very excited about parenthood, you know, and you know, you read books and you want to figure out the best ways to raise kids, how to instill confidence in them, how to ensure that they're going to be a nice person, right? And so I think that they just put their heads together and tried to come up with ways to help me grow um, into a confident and nice young woman. And I think that that was their source of guidance. And I think they prayed a lot too and, and tried to um, ask for guidance in that respect. And so my dad will tell you that that affirmation came um, to them through God is, is the answer that he'd give you. And where did his love of golf come from? <laughs> he grew up in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And <laughs> so he and his brothers would work at golf courses growing up and then get to play them in the evenings on Mondays. And I think it was just a family thing. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have any other questions for Mariah? If not, I'm going to end it on one last one for you. So for every athlete, there's a why, why they do what they do. Why do you do what you do? My why is certainly that I fell in love with this game at such a young age, and it's given so much to me, friendship and, and the things that it's taught me about myself. And I can kind of tie it back to the affirmation a little bit, is when you decide, hey, I like this enough, whether, whatever field you're in, and I want to pursue this, um, everything is going to be a journey. You're going to reach a goal, and you're going to set a new one, and you're going to continue to have something to inspire to. Um, and as long as I can feel confident in this journey and believe in myself and feel like I still have somewhere to go and I still love this and I'm still improving, then that's always going to be the why. You know, just that hunger to continue to get better and better. So that's my why. I absolutely love the game of golf, and I want to see just how far I can go with it. Well, we are so thankful that you chose golf as your passion <laughs> and that you're sharing your story with us, and we're really excited to share your story with even more people and continue to inspire that next generation. So thank you very much for taking part, and thank you, Roberta, for everything you've done with Drive On. Thanks, Kelly. <laughs> Thanks for having me.